All right. So these are the things we'll be discussing briefly tonight as far as dynamic libraries is concerned. So let me just put the topic here. Dynamic library. So the first thing about this concept or things we have to know, first and foremost, we'll be discussing about what we call stages of compilation. Then after this, um, under the stages of compilation, we'll discuss the pre-processing stage, the pre-processing, then that is uh, the minus E. Then we'll also discuss about the second stage of compilation, which is called the compilation stage. If all these things doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will make sense soon. Uh, then we'll also discuss about the third stage, which is called the assembly, the assembly stage. And lastly, the fourth stage is called the linkage or linking, whichever one. Let me say the linking stage. Yeah. Then the second bullet point for tonight would be why uh, we use dynamic libraries. Why and how do we use them? Why, that is for dynamic libraries, why do we need it? And how do we actually create a dynamic library? Please, I don't know, are you people hearing like feedback or noise from my own end here? No! Yeah. I think it's someone on the background and someone is on the next Sorry, but everyone else is I think someone else is up there, except if your background is noisy. Yeah. yeah. It's from your background. It's from my background, right? Um, okay, let me yeah. just change the location. Yeah. That would be okay. All right. Let me assume it's a bit better now. So, We'll be working with some flags tonight. The first flag is a dash shared. Then the other flag we'll be working with is the FPIC. All these things, I'm still going to explain them. So I just want to write them here. So we'll be taking them one by one. Ah, where's my mouse? Okay. So we'll be taking them one by one. FPIC. Then... We'll be discussing the two ways by which in which we can actually create dynamic libraries. So let me put it here: two ways to create or two methods to create dynamic libraries. Let me say two methods. Then as well, we'll be talking about something we call that's to be the third thing we'll be talking about: environment variable. which we call the dollar l d underscore library then underscore p a t h that is part then the last one for tonight the fourth thing we'll be talking about okay no we still have one more thing we'll talk about we we'll talk about some flags or should i say some command nm um Okay, let me use a tab there. We talk about NM, then we talk about um, LDD, then we talk about ID config, and the last thing we'll be talking about C Python. So that's all for tonight using C types. All right, so let's start the stages of compilation of a C program. I believe uh, this thing is pretty basic. So we understand um, this talk, but I will still take us through it, even though some of us here might understand. But just to serve as a reminder, uh, we are going to go through it. So I'm trying to open my virtual box now. 
want to believe it's already up and running. So, the first stage of compilation, we can divide them into four stages. We have the preprocessing stage, we have the compilation stage, the assembly stage, and also the linking stage. So when we are talking about the preprocessing stage, this stage basically means when you try to uh, GCC your file, you have to pass in this flag called minus E. And when you do that, you are trying to uh, remove comments that you have in your code. You are trying to remove comments. You are trying to add preprocessor directives. And it is, it is going to include all the necessary headers that you should be added to your file it's going to do that to your file so what we are saying is that let's say you have a c program uh something like this maybe you are starting it with your hash include then you have your stdio.h then let's say you have a preprocessor directive say say something like hash define whatever whatever you are defining something uh let's say you are defining max as or let's say you are defining uh what can you define let's just say you want to give any name let's say you want to define code tribe as int meaning that anywhere in your program you have code tribe so you can say something like code tribe main void and your compiler won't throw an error you can start your program like this normally you know we are supposed to write something like int main void but then as a preprocessor directive at the top of your file here this particular c file you already defined what code tribe should mean you had you defined it as int meaning that anytime your compiler sees code tribe is going to interpret it as int so all these particular commands or these instructions are being taken care of by this stage called the preprocessing stage before the compilation starts your file is going to be preprocessed um, so your compiler is going to uh, not the compiler now you are not actually compiling compiling this is just like the pre-processing the process is going to uh, go through before the real compilation would start so the processing stage is going to take care of your comments Whatever comments you have in your code, that means if you have a comment like this, uh, let's say you have a more single line comment like I love coding, something like this in your code, in your C file, then all these uh, comments, they are going to be removed because they are not relevant to your code. So before the compilation stage, before it will get to the compilation stage, it's going to remove it. That's what the preprocessor is going to do. And how do you preprocess a file? You have to GCC the file using this flag called minus E. When you do that, it's going to preprocess your file, meaning that it's going to remove comments, it's going to include the necessary headers you already directed it to do, and it's going to take in commands. These particular commands, when you use your hash defined, these commands are called the preprocessor directives. They are basically meant for the preprocessor to interpret or to understand what exactly these lines with me they start with hash define so when you do your hash define if and if and if whatever starts with hash 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 they are being handled by your preprocessor um let me see the inside uh quote 14 okay let me just create a directory called quote 14 so let me see the inside it All right, so um, that's for that about the preprocessing stage. And basically, let me just create a file to just show us how a preprocessed file can look like. It's going to be lengthy, actually. Let me just create a, let's say, test.c. Let's name this guy test.c. And let's say, hash include. Let's say we have something like this in our file, stdio.h. Then you are starting your program with int main void. Then let's say you are just printing something. Print f. I am in a PLD session. Let's assume this is what we have inside our file. 
and you are trying to preprocess this file okay i don't have any comments so let me just put a comment here and let us see if the comments will be removed this is a comment okay so this is our main program now int main void print f i i am in a pod session so let's say we'll be returning something um, okay so let me try and compile this file if i want to compile it like i said we are going to use this flag called minus e and your preprocess files they normally have a .i extension uh that is the default extension for preprocess files so let me run this file gcc with my minus e capital e flag then i'm going to preprocess this guy called test.c so i'm going to run that oh wow 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 it printed it out to my standard output so what i'm to do is to redirect uh this guy okay you can see it here sir. all these things at the top whatever things at the top like i said is going to include the necessary uh headers it needs to include your preprocessor is going to add them there so let me recompile uh, let me re preprocess this file and put it inside uh, a file called let's say test.i so let me clear my screen test.i so now i can now open my test.i and we're going to see the same output that we saw just now test.i yeah so this file is a preprocess file you can see uh these are should i say headers that can be included in our file but then we only included stdio.h let me just go down our main concern is the one down down here so let me use my page down good i'm at the ending part of this particular file and here we have it you can see this is the main code now your main code will be here you can see we have the int main void you can see print f return zero and that's all the comments i have in my code has been removed then my hash include stdio.h all these things you are seeing at the top are like the interpretations of this stdio.h you know that your uh headers they cut across one another so you might include stdio.h but you might still be including some other uh should i say headers that are in order that are defined in other uh other files that is standard headers in your program some of them are cut across one another but i feel all these lines we have at the top here somehow somehow they are uh, related to our stdio.h but the main point uh here is that the comments this guy i love coding it has been removed i wouldn't know where we have this in our code where the hash defined code tribe int is inside this particular file but of course i'm very sure it's inside this place it's going to interpret this line it's definitely inside this line it's there if you check through this code it's there but i'm not going to start looking for that now but this is just to show us how we can compile a file and the file is going to stop at the pre-processing stage that is removing comments and um, remove comments expand whatever header you are including then it's going to take in preprocessor directives that is just uh, the basic of we compiling a file through the preprocessing stage now we have the compilation stage this is where you compile your file that is your c program your dot c program you try to compile this file and it is going to give you uh a code uh what is this code human no 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 ah uh, no 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 when you use your gcc minus ls flag it's going to compile your file but it's not going to get to the assembly stage so when you gcc minus s you are going to actually uh compile your code and it will generate an assembly code for you that is what this uh meaning that it's not going to get to the assembly stage but it's going to generate an assembly code so let us uh let me see this is a uh 
test.c then i'm going to pass in my minus s flag test.c so this compilation stage is just a step further from this guy it's a step further from pre-processing stage meaning that after removing the comments and adding all the inclu uh, necessary standard headers then it's going to now compile it and give you generate an assembly code for you this assembly code is still human readable some people can actually read assembly codes and you can actually use it to debug as well when you compile for it to stop at the compilation stage meaning that it is going to give you an assembly code which should obviously end in a dot s extension so when i gss uh, gcc uh my dot s uh, gcc with my minus s flag then i'm just using my test dot c file when i click enter when i ls what's the extension of the file you can see there i have a new file here called dot with a dot s extension to show me that i already generated an assembly code so you can via into this code now uh you can you know maybe check through and you, if you can actually read assembly code then you'll be able to understand whatever we have here the assembly code is uh like I said, some people use this to debug or for reverse engineering. When you are talking about reverse engineering, you are trying to understand what a source code is. Then you can GCC your file, stopping at the assembly stage, uh, at the compilation stage using your minus S, the compilation stage. Then you can actually see uh, what we have in the code. Then after this, we... Have another stage called the assembly stage. Here you are uh, GCCing your file and you are creating object code. It's going to give you an object code. This one you can't read it. These are binary files. Uh, I doubt if anyone can read. Uh, maybe, maybe we would have, but then I doubt if anyone can read binary files. But obviously, I'm 100% sure people read. Uh, assembly codes it's the dot s extension then it's an assembly code so when i just see this file using my what my minus c flag then it's going to give me oh this is minus c then test dot c you can see it's going to give me an object code which is this guy test dot o is an object code and when i veer into this file I am I'm expecting a binary code which I can't read. Uh, I can't actually read that. Okay, I'm saying something like I am in a PID session here. But then your computer understand this code. Like because it is in a uh, machine readable format, zeros and ones. So your computer understands this code while humans will be able to understand our uh, assembly code. But object files or object codes are uh, being understood by machine so you can say that our assembly stage is just a step further from what from the compilation stage then the last thing to do after uh, generating object code is your linking stage now this is our point of focus tonight all what we are going to discuss tonight is basically uh, as regards the linking stage so i don't just want to start talking about linking stage without us having a background knowledge of the other three stages that comes before it that was why uh, that's why i'm actually taking my time to show us what is the preprocessing stage removing comments compilation stage generating assembly code and also the assembly stage turning assembly code to object code that is binary files that your computer would readily understand then after that you can now link your files and what is the linking or this particular linkage file it is when you would generate your final executable uh i can do these four processes at once me doing gcc uh, preprocessing compilation assembling and linkage how would i do that by using my gcc then test.c gcc without a flag without any flag that is without your minus e minus s or minus c is going to go through these four processes at once that is the four stages that's what it's going to do at once so when i gcc test.c and i press enter 
when I do ls, I'm going to see the word a dot out. This is my final executable. So the linking stage will lead, uh, will give us a final executable. So it is this executable now. I will be able to run. Then my program will like do what I actually asked it to do initially when I created this file called test.c. So that is what this linking stage. Uh, but then we are still going to talk about it though. This is not all about linking or when we are trying to link an object code to give us a final executable. So this is just a brief analysis of the stages of compilation. Your GCC is going to complete the four stages. So you don't need to bother yourself too much about preprocessing, compilation, assembly, and linkage. That is being done anytime you type GCC. But when you want to stop at a particular process, that is when you can now uh, start using your flags. If you really want to know what is going on under the hood, which is fine, you know, you can always try things out and try to see if you can read assembly codes and understand uh, the source codes. That's if you are so much interested in reverse engineering and all those crack me tasks, then this particular concept is what you would need. So going on, this is the second thing we'll be discussing tonight is why and how. So the question is, why do we need dynamic libraries? Or when we hear the word dynamic library, what should actually come to our mind as regards this particular concept? So I want to ask a question. I'm throwing it out to the audience now. Why do you think we need dynamic libraries? Or when you hear the word dynamic libraries, what comes to your mind? Anyone? We've actually done the project, so. And I'm sure we've read up on this concept, so. I'm asking a question now. Huh? What do you understand by the word dynamic libraries? And why do you think we need it? I believe we are here, right? Please, I want us to respond. Yeah, we are here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Let's talk. Let's talk. What do you understand by the concept? This particular concept called dynamic library. Or why do you think mm. we need it? Why? Okay. Um, this no is one is speaking. <laughs> you said? Please go on. Um, um just okay go on um, okay um dynamic something that can be shared something that um that's reusable that's um um yeah that's something that's adaptable i think yeah that's why i understand by dynamic Okay, something that is dynamic, that can be shared, it is reusable. Actually, you are very right, you are very right. Um, let us try to use the analogy of someone who goes to, since we are talking about libraries here, so let's just relate it with the real world library that we have. Let's say you happen to be in an academic library or an academic setting and you, you want to use a book, maybe a book on a particular concept, uh, Let's assume any subjects, let's say mathematics or English, and you decided to uh, to go to the library to get a book that discusses about that particular concept. You do not need to, how will I put it? Like, the books are there in the library. They are there for you. When you need them, you just go into the library, pick up the particular book you want to study on, read it there at the library, and return it. As simple as that. So this... Uh, concept too, we can actually relate it to dynamic libraries in C. The libraries, the library itself is the uh, shared library, that is, you know, it's you can share, you can go there, pick up what you need. The particular books in the library can be likened to functions, like the functions that we would use maybe in our program, we are trying to write a program and all that, but the library in itself is the same as the like dynamic library that we have here. So what is contained in dynamic libraries, they are functions or reusable piece of code that we can use in our program. And like she said, they are shared, meaning that anytime you want to use them, you basically just need to um, 
take just what you need. Why we have a lot of functions. You don't need to uh, load all the functions and link it to your own object code because when you want to use dynamic libraries, we are going to compile our file and stop at the assembly stage. Then assembly stage plus your library will now link together to give us the final executable, which will now run. So when you have your assembly code, that is your binary code, you are going to link your binary code with your shared library. Then when you link them together, you, it will now give you the desired output, that is your final executable. You are going to use maybe your minus O flag to redirect the output to a particular file, and then you are going to get the final executable. Meaning that I can write a program and then when I want to link, let's say I have a program that is calling a function called sum. I can have a dynamic library that has the definition of this function called sum in it. So by the time I link the library with my own source file, that is, yeah, with my own source file, I can use that function that is inside that library just as a person would enter into a library to go and pick up a book or read up on a particular book and then you will return that book to the library when you are done the same uh process is happening here you need a function you do not need to define the function just go to where the library is use the function and then you return the function uh, you return the function or you return the book uh depending on uh what you need so the same thing is happening here by the word dynamic, it means that it can be reused by different files and then you are not picking it. It's not that maybe one person is using a function. When it is being used, others can't use it. No. Everyone has access to these functions in your library because the library is dynamic. Basically, uh, when you create a dynamic library, it is going to store the address or the particular function that you need. In a way that whenever you are trying to link your file to your library, then it's going to get loaded. The address of your uh, function is going to get loaded. It's going to be linked to your C file. And when you are linking the address, you're just getting the address. The address of the function, that means it's pointing to the function, right? So when the function is called in your C file, and uh, you need to use it. Since you have the address of the function, it's something you can trigger. You can use it. Uh, so this is one way our dynamic library is different from static library. I believe we must have done a project on static library earlier. So when you are talking about static libraries, you have to load the whole function that you need. You have to join it with your own executable file. And it's going to lengthen or increase the size of your executable. That is the final executable. It's going to increase the size. But for dynamic library, basically what you are getting is the address of that function. And as a point, if you have the address of any variable, you have access on unlimited access to such a variable so i feel this uh, explains why we need dynamic libraries simply put when we have a library that has a lot of functions we do not need to keep recreating or keep replicating such functions when we want to use it we only need to have that those functions in a specific place so whenever we want to use them we reference them then when we are done that's all so basically we can have a single function created and this single function can be served or can serve a lot of programs or a lot of files so we can say that dynamic library can improve the efficiency or the runtime of our program and it's we have, have uh, let us avoid duplicating um, codes or duplicating functions let's say I, I have a function called sum and I want to use it in like two different programs I don't need to keep uh, recreating sum in two places I only need to create it once store it as a library then when I want to use it in a particular file, I reference that library from inside. I link my file with the library, then I'm going to be able to use it. And a lot of files, like I said, can use a single library at once. So the next question says, how? How can we actually create a dynamic library? So basically, we'll just be working with commands. We'll be working with commands. And I want this to actually make sense. Uh, let me edit my, let me remove, uh, in fact, uh, let me remove the files we do not need. Test.i, I want to remove test.s, and also test.o. Um, uh, these people are making noise, so. Okay, I only have test.c here. Yeah? So let me have 
because we'll be working with functions so let us create functions let us create functions um okay this is my main file let me still leave this main file let me come here and write a code so i want to create a new file this is the file i want to create or turn into a library so i'm calling this guy func.c i just want it to contain functions so let's say we have two functions here um let me declare let's say we want to just do addition and multiplication let's let's just say that's our function so i'm having a function here called sum then it's going to take in two uh variables then how can i write a function that will add two numbers let me just how can i do that Davis, are you just Mel Davis? I'm here. All but right. Can you see my screen? Like that and here, your screen is showing multiple, like it's showing multiple screens. I don't Can know. you see it now? I believe it should be better now because I've already left the interface. Are you yes, seeing my terminal? Thing. Okay, good. I can see your terminal and I can see the notes part side by side. Good. So we are actually focusing on the left part of the screen now. We are trying to write a function that is going to add two numbers. Or should I say we return the sum of two numbers? Let's do it in such a way. So how can we do that? I feel mm. we can see this. Okay. So, um, Declare the variables. Okay, which variables? Or oh, just tell me what to do. Oh, this is um, equal to int a plus b. A plus b, yeah. Define the integers. Like I should just type int. Mm hmm. Okay. Int what? Use um, I J. Int I. And J, comma space J. Okay. Why do we need J? Um, I say you're adding two numbers, right? Yeah, these are the two numbers, so they are here. They are serving as argument to this function so that means whenever we would be using this function we are going to pass in arguments to it so it's going to add the arguments that is a and b oh okay so we don't need the ij um but we need a care for it sure mm. Um, can someone help us out here? Someone else? Okay, we are adding um, A and B. Um. Yes. Yeah, so it's A plus B. Okay, I say something like int A plus B. Mm -hmm. Something like this. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. is that all? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the A and B should be in a bracket, I think. Um, okay, this is um, it. We want to add A and B. Don't you think we need to store it in another variable? Yeah. Yeah, we need to. So, we need to actually declare a new variable to actually store that. Um, so, we can say something like in store or in addition we can now say is equal to a plus b you can write something like this you might decide to wrap it or not it depends on your preference so basically since we have the first argument the second argument so this function called sum is going to add a and 
p together so you can just say int addition you are declaring a new variable to store whatever uh, happens to be the addition of these two variables so this is a plus b we want to add the two together and we are storing it inside a variable called addition i think uh davis can hear me right so um this function would return the sum of the two numbers so we are not going to say something like return what we can return what addition so this function would return addition and what is addition it basically means with a plus b you can write it this way or you say something like return return a plus b so it depends on you you can write it in any way that you like you can say something like return a plus b like this or you store the addition of a and b inside the variable then you return that variable so there are a lot of ways to go about this actually a lot of ways so let us um delete this and just return a plus b meaning that this function so we do not need line uh three anymore i believe uh no one is confused as regards this code right this code this function called sum it has two arguments a and b then it is returning what the addition of the two arguments the addition of a and b i believe we are uh clear with this function right yes all right yeah now let us write another function called multiplication so i'll say in small now it's you guys that that are going to do this one how can i go about this in such a way that it's going to return the addition of two uh numbers that is the two arguments that it is taking how can i go about this oh yeah are we there yeah okay we are still using the addition um method yes how can i go about that <laughs> yes it's a and it's b okay like okay. different arguments um, uh, what is this being printed? It's products. Um, sorry, I'm coming on. Something is being printed on my screen. Victor. Ah, God, your, your colleagues are. Please, ah, uh, Victor, please, Ojo. It's your voice is disturbing my meeting. Uh, hey, you're not going to smash your laptop screen, no? Ah, uh, um, okay, I think, okay, I think I'm back now. Okay, I'm sorry for that. So, what do you say we should do? And so we can declare the um let's declare um, variable products that we use and store the okay. results right so in products uh -huh. um then uh, product equal to a times b yeah okay so what's the next thing yeah but you could put it in parentheses yeah either it's in parentheses or not it's still going to work but then okay then uh, uh, yeah then we'll just um, return products okay and close the statement return products all right good so i hope no one is confused if you are confused please just speak up uh we can go over it again as regards what we just wrote here this function the first one is sum it's returning a plus b that is this is a this is b that means whatever thing you put here is going to return it and this is product is returning a times b so let us test these functions and see if it's actually working so let me say int main void then i want to 
call the function before you can call the function you have to call it in a main function right it's a main function that can call like if you want to run your program right so i want to call some and i want to pass in two integers inside it i want to pass in um um let's say three and five so i'm calling the function like that then i want to call the other function called more so i'm just going to call more and i'm going to call more and i'm going to pass in two numbers inside again three and five so let us do something uh i want these functions to actually print out something so print i want it to print out product so i'll just say percent d as the format specifier then i'm going to put a new line here then i'm going to print out product like this then also before my return statement i can't actually come and print after return statement because return is going to terminate a program so it would not make sense for me to come here and say print uh a plus b or something okay, like that. Yeah, yeah. i don't know if i'm genuine okay uh, uh can someone okay. confirm if i'm not audible okay i think it's your network then someone said they can hear me so for this one let us say we are having a variable called store then we are storing a plus b inside it um it's going to store a plus b then let us print out store print f uh, let me just spawn another this thing here so this one will keep loading um vagrant ssh so i want us to be looking at this program while i run the program here so that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to spawn another uh bash an instance of my vagrant virtual box there so percent d for format specifier then my new line new line is backward slash n now i'm going to put a comma if i'm using my printf after the opening and closing parentheses i'm going to put in uh my comma good then i'm going to pass in what percent d stands for is what store i'm trying to print store so i'm going to pass in store this way good so this sum function i called it here okay let me come here and terminate this so i called the sum function here uh, so this is my main program my compiler i'm getting to this line okay i didn't include the hash include scdio i have to include my scdio.h because i'm using printf i didn't plan to use it before but since i'm using it now so i have to actually include this in my main uh program now so yeah we have some we have our int a and int b then store is what a plus b then i'm saying it should print out store basically it's going to print out the addition of a and b which is this guy so where did i call it i called it a sum and i passed in three and five so i'm expecting okay. on calling sum when my compiler my compiler is going to start from main it's going to start from main when it is reading your code on reading line one it's going to see this guy but this guy won't make sense to it it's going to see this guy as well but it's going to start running my program for main as long as it sees main and to start running then on getting to main the first thing it sees is sum so it's going to go up and go and search where do i have from and uh, sum declared so it's going to call me and say okay sum takes in two arguments which are two integer variables so you're going to check are these values integer variables yes they are so it's going to do what create a variable called store then it's going to do the addition of these two variables that is three and five which is eight then it's going to store the value inside store then it's going to print out eight to the screen then it's going to return a plus b that means it is returning to what to my main program but then i'm not storing what it is returning in a variable because this is a function called sum and it is returning something so if i want to retrieve the value it is storing then i have to declare like a variable here and say something like 
in let's say a then i can now say that a equals to sum 3 plus 5 that means what will be stored in a whatever this very uh, function is returning and what is it returning it's returning addition of a plus b so it is going to store it inside this variable called a here but since i do not need to guess what is returning so that's why i do not need to uh do this i'm just telling us what this return statement is doing it's going to return something where is it returning it to it's returning it to whatever it is calling this function which is what our main function so let me see do i have the file here i now have the file called func.c i already saved this program uh let me save it again so when i, I think just is frozen you said I think your screen is frozen. Wow. What about now? Uh, I, I, could you just try and type something? Okay. The right side of my screen, are you seeing anything? No. Wow. Wow, wow. I'm seeing something. You are typing P P P P P P P. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So, so is it from my end? Probably. Yes, it's definitely from your end. You can just leave mm -hmm. and join again. I think it's the network glitch from me. You can leave and join again. Um. So I want to just see this file called funk dot c. Then pass it to. I want to store the executable inside F. So I ran that without no error. So I want to say dot slash F. Then the first thing is printed was what? 8, which is what? This print F statement here. When I called some, it's printed 8. Then the next thing is printed was what? More 3.5, which is what? Inside more, we also have another print F statement. It's printing out what? Product. What is product? A times B which is what 15 that means 3 times 5 is 15 and then um, 3 plus 5 happens to be 8 uh i don't know if anyone is confused as regards what we just did here or oh. as regards why we are getting this output okay i believe we are uh, good to go in that case so let me go back to uh our main focus now now okay good um i'm going to delete this i don't need my main program here i only need this function like i said when you are creating a library right your library should contain functions that will be used by main program you can see inside this file these functions now they are local to this particular file but then how can i make these functions in such a way that any uh c file can use them so I want to delete this main. I don't need main here. I don't need main. I only need the functions. I don't need main. So I'm going to delete uh, my printf statement too. I don't need a printf statement here. Since I know the functions are returning the product and the more respectively. So I'm going to delete this line as well. And I'm going to take off my scdio.h because I'm not using printf here, right? So I don't need that. So this is just... Uh, a file that has two functions this guy and this guy they are just c codes so i'm going to exit this and save now uh, so let me remove my f executable now like i said we are dealing with how right how can we create a shared library once again this is my code my function.c file which basically has only what my functions. So how do I create a shared library? How do I create a shared library? We basically work with commands. So let me type it here. There are the flags I already put here. So first thing, you, there are two ways to go about it. I wrote it here, two methods. The first thing is to uh, create, or should I say here, you will create your object files that is you are going to get to this stage your preprocessing stage right 
you are going to create object files. These are machine uh, codes that your computer would understand. So when you do that, you create your object codes. When you get to this stage, then um, you can now link. By the time you create, there are some special commands you are going to use to uh, turn this func.c file to a library. Let me type it out here. The first thing is create an object code, then link to your library. The second method is to create a library, then compile with your source code. These are like in my own books, like two ways you can use to uh, go about this. So when you want to create a library, so, these are the commands. Uh -huh. Your line went off. So we're not hearing you. Oh. It's gone off again. Okay. I was saying that we have two methods uh -huh. to create dynamic libraries. One is either you create an object code from your C file, then you link the object code to your library. And by object code, we mean you are stopping at the assembly stage. Or you create a library, then you compile with your source code the library. That is, you compile the library, the shared library. Let me use the word shared. Shared library with your source code. So let us go with this uh, first method. About we creating object code, then we link the object code to our library. So first and foremost, let us create the our library. How do we create a library? You use your GCC, then you pass in your minus shared flag. Your shared flag is telling you, you want to share. It's a shared what um library. So you use your GCC with your minus shared flag. Then there is this your F. PIC flag. FPIC, your PIC flag is telling you is position independent code. Meaning that it's not a code that has to deal with the position of this particular library or the position of the um of the file or maybe it can only be used in a particular location. Meaning that as long as you have the address of this variable or these um, functions that I have inside my library, I can use them. So PIC is a like an acronym for position independent code. That is, it is not dependent on the position before you be able to use this your shared library. So once again, you use your GCC, you use your minus shared flag, you use your minus. Okay, I didn't put the minus there use your minus fpic then you now specify the name of the c file your c file that is the name of the c file you want to turn to a library what's the name of my c file which is this guy func.c you can see func.c i have two functions here so i want to make these functions a shared library right so I'm, this is the command i'm going to type my gcc my shared my position independent uh, flag, code flag, then I'm going to specify my C file. So this is the way to do it. Then you can now store the output. You can redirect the output inside a file. Let's say you want to name the file. Uh, what's the name we can use now? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Let's say I want to name it functions. So let's say I want to name my library functions. Now, there are certain naming conventions we need to follow. When you are creating from your, let me call this guy, uh, this is it here, func.c. So let me just use the word func.c. GCC minus FPIC func.c. So this is it, my GCC flag, my minus shared flag, my minus position independent code flag. Then this is the name of my, uh, the name of the source code that I want to turn to a library, then I want to store the output inside what 
functions. Now, this is the naming convention. When you want to store the output, you, it has to start with lib. That is the name of the library. So I have to put lib, then my library name. Then it also has to end with a .so extension. This is how, uh, this is the naming convention for Linux OS. Uh, when you are using other OS, it can change, but for Linux, that is, if you are using your Ubuntu, then this is the naming convention for your library. That is, from func.c file, I want to use my GCC minus shared minus FPIC. I want to create a library and I want to store the output inside lib functions.so. This lib must always precede your library names. Then this is the library name. Then my .so extension is showing me that it is a library. So when I do this, it's going to create a library that has this name and it's going to be an executable. So let me run that GCC uh, minus shared minus F then capital letter position independent code then the name of the file which is my func.c I want to store the output inside what a file called functions but I have to precede it with lib to show it is a library then functions the what uh, in fact let me name it arithmetics because it's just doing addition and subtraction so let me name it arithmetics dot so so when i do that no errors so i do ls you are going to see it here i have it arithmetic dot so like i said creating dynamic libraries is all about you working around with what with uh functions uh, uh, with commands basically you can see your gcc your shared flag your position independent code flag then you specify the name of the word the where the source code where you have your library or the particular C file you want to turn to a library which is this guy then you pass the output into a file called arithmetics but this arithmetics must have lib preceding it then it must also end with a dot s to so extension which is what we have here so here we have a what a library this guy here is a library so after this I said the first thing is what you create an object code then link to your library of course you, you we've created our library now uh we've created our library so how can i create an object code which code do i want to turn to an object code it is this particular guy here um c yes no this is the library c the test.c so let me modify my test.c file in such a way that i will call these functions inside it we've not modified it so let me go ahead and modify my test.c file so i want to call these two functions we, we haven't written these functions earlier so that's why we haven't called them so i want to call them now um, um so yeah let me just call in fact let me say int a equals to 200 then int b equals to 3 or let's say 5 then i'm calling sum or let me declare int c it's not taking anything since i know that these functions return what integer values you should see this is the return value this is the return value so this guy is returning what the sum of the two arguments so i can declare c and say that c equals to what sum then passing a and b meaning that i'm passing in 200 and what and five that's basically what i just did here and 200 times five is uh, 200 plus five is 205 and this function is going to return the sum of a and b so it's going to return the sum of 205. So it's going to return 205 and the value is going to be assigned to C. So I can now go ahead now and do what? And print F and say that I just want to make it as uh, explanatory as possible. So that's why I'm having all this print F. The sum, no, I can even say percentage D plus percentage D equals to percentage d 
So what did I just do here? I added a new line now. So the first percentage D is for what? Is for A, which is a value of 200. Then I'll put my comma. Then the next percentage D, which is this format I have to specify here, is what? Is for B, right? So I have to say B, then a comma. Then the last percentage D format specifier is for what? Is for C, which is storing the addition of these two. So I'll now put C. Then I'll close that, terminate with my semicolon. So basically, this is going to print out what? A plus B equals to what? C, which is A plus B equals to, what? equals to C. Meaning that 200 plus 5 is equal to what? The sum. This function is returning the sum, which is here. Like we can see there. So that's what I just did there. Going on, I want to do that for multiplication too. So I'm going to say C equals to mol then a and b so the same uh format i'm going to print out as well right so i'm going to say print f mm -hmm. then percentage d plus percentage d multiplication to, oh times yeah. thank you times percentage d equals to percentage d then i'll add a new line then my comma a comma b comma c so the same thing is going to happen as well it's going to say that what percentage d that is a which is 200 times percentage d which is b times 5 equals to c that means mol is returning something to c so whatever value mol return whatever value it returns here that is a times b whatever output it gives us is going to be print, uh, give it to, to c and it's going to be printed right here then i added a new line all right so i believe this is our main function now it's working uh i want to assume we do not have errors here um, let me see okay i feel this is all right so now you remember what's inside our main function we declared three variables a b and c then for some we stored it inside c then we said a plus b is this then for this a times b is this so that's basically for that um so we're having the test.c file which is our main program we're also having the what the func.c which is what okay now we do not need func.c again now because whatever is inside func.c has been uh made into a library a dynamic one at that so this is the source code this is the what the object code this guy here is an object code that is a binary code when i veer into this guy in fact i can't enter i try to do that but i can't enter arithmetics.so you can see right it's zeros and ones so this is a machine code so i have no business with the machine code just to show that what is an object code just like we discussed earlier object codes are what uh, binary files so when you gcc and create a library your library in itself with a dot s or extension and lib is a what is a binary code so we already have that here now so i can now go ahead and link my test.c file with my object code i want to link this file with this guy right and i expect it to work but then let us see what will happen there are still some things we are going to do here so at this stage i can do two things one i first convert this guy test.c file this is an ordinary file now i can convert it to an object code so when i convert test.c file to an object code that means i'll be having the object code for test.c i can now match object code with this object code together because if i run this guy now it's going to throw an error it's going to say undefined reference to um more let me just compile that for you are going to some see some more uh, here. so when i type that you can see that what it's not going to run it's throwing an error that what is some it doesn't know what is small it doesn't know you can see undefined reference to these guys and you can see it entered into this directory usr slash bin slash ld ld is a directory that is storing all your shared libraries your shared libraries ld is the bin directory where we have them so it entered into this directory and it is looking for mol and sum 
where I have the libme uh, the lib.so file for them, and then it couldn't find it out. So that is why it is showing this error. So that means I have to link my test.c file with this guy. And how can I do that? Like I said, we can do it in two ways. One, I create an object code for this guy, then I link the object code of test.c with this one. Or I GCC my test.c file, then I GCC it with this guy. And you know, I said GCC is going to do the four stages by default, right? When you GCC, it's going to preprocess, -com pre compile, assemble, and link at once. It's going to do everything at once. So instead of me, first of all, stopping at this stage, then later linking it, why don't I just use GCC so it, it will do the four processes at once? Then by the time it is linking, it's going to link the object code of this guy and it's going to link it with this guy. Then to now give me my final executable. So I'm going to do that right now. Of course, I'm actually expecting an error and I'll tell you why I'm getting an error. I'm going to tell you that, but I'm still going to run it for you so you see. So I'm going to do GCC, then our file. What's the name of my file? Test.c file. Test.c file. Mm. Then I'm also going to link so when you want to link uh the first thing when you want to link your uh library you use your minus l flag capital l and you have to specify again where that library is the library you want to link you have to specify so how do you specify something let me just show you um when i do ls you can see ls is showing me the files i have here but when i do ls with a dot it's going to show me the files in my current working directory no okay i should add a space there i believe okay ls with the dot um it's going to show me uh the files in my current working directory but when i do ls dot dot it's going to show me the files in the directory just before this one let me do pwd pwd this was i'm inside quote 14. so when i do ls dot dot it's going to come to this directory called vagrant it's come it's going to come and list the directory there that's what dot dot is go a directory backward but a single dot means the current one that i'm in so when i do ls dot dot you can see it's giving me all the directories I have inside or all the files I mean and the I have inside Vagrant of which course 14 is included. You can see course 14 there. So I just want to show us this idea of what dot means and what dot dot means. That is why when you do cd dot dot, it's going to take you backwards. But when you do cd with dot, you are still going to remain where you are. You can see I'm still there because dot means your current working directory, but dot dot means it's going to take you what backwards that's why i see the dot, dot when you do that it will just take you backwards you can see now i've already left quote 14 i'm now inside vagrant so let me just see the back to where i was so i'm back now inside quote 14. so the same thing happens here when you gcc your file then you gcc uh test.c of course gcc is going to do the four stages right preprocessing compilation assembly and linking it's going to do that together all at once so i'm not going to say i want to link i want to link the output of this guy i want to link it with this guy so i'm going to use my minus l flag then i have to specify where the library is so i'm going to use a dot you use a dot to show that it is your current working duration you have to pass the path and if the our uh, library which is this guy my lib arithmetic dot so if it wasn't in this library then i have to specify the full path where the library i want to link with the object code of my gcc uh, of my test.c file where it is i have to specify so this is me linking this guy with my libarithmetics.so file or my libarithmetic.so uh, shared library so when i do that i'm going to now after using this my minus l is used to specify the part where the library is that is where it is going to look for and with a dot it means my current library 
Then another thing you have to include now is the library you want to include. So this time around, you are going to include only the name of the library, which is arithmetics. You would not need to put in the prefix and the suffix. That is your LIB, which is telling us, okay, this is a library, and your .so, which is also telling us a library. So I'm going to pass in only the name of the library, which is arithmetics. But then you will now use a flag called minus L at the front. So I'm doing, let me reduce this. So I'm doing GCC, my file that I want to compile. Then I want to link my minus L. The dot is telling me that what I'm linking is currently where I am. Dot, that is my current working directory. Then I'm, I now pass the name okay. of the library. But I have to use a minus L flag to link together. The minus L is the linking. The minus L dot is showing me what I want to link is in my current working directory. So when I run this now, it should work, but then it's going to throw an error because there is still a setup we haven't done. There is still a setup we haven't done. So this is the way to uh, actually link. When I do this now, I can now say, I want to link this guy with this guy. So I can now save the output in a particular direction, just like normally if you GCC uh, test.c, you say minus o maybe test something like that so it's the same thing the gcc test.c now is serving as all these guys the reason i'm having this additional uh stuff is because test.c cannot run on its own i need to link it to where the functions are defined that is why i'm having my minus l dot and my minus l the name of my shared library so that explains that so at this point now i can now pass the output after the linking i can now use my minus o flag and pass the output inside um let's say store i can just name it store so when i press enter like i said i'm expecting an error and i'll tell you why someone has a question no no so i'm going to press enter and then it still says implicit declaration of function sum okay 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 uh let me veer into my file called um i didn't include the header at the top yeah this error is coming from here so i need to add the header uh the prototype i mean int sum then it's going to take in int and int so i need to include this then also int more then int and int okay so i should include that in my main file so just to show us that let me just gcc only the file now just to show us that it is not going to work can you see saying that undefined reference to some undefined reference to main so it is compiling now but then it can't find some and it can't find main so we have to like link together so now i'm going to link again i'm going to run this command again so i have my sum and my mod inside this guy so when i run now i'm saving the output inside store and i press enter wow it worked it worked i was actually expecting that to fail because there is still something i haven't done okay 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 good so i want to run store now let us see dot slash store and then good 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 can you see the error message it's saying that error while loading shared libraries so it's already giving me the name of the library library lib arithmetics.so it says that what cannot open shared library file no such file or directory here we have it my compiler is telling me it cannot find this file and i have it in my current working directory so what exactly is happening why is it that my compiler cannot find it or is it telling me cannot find such a file the reason the reason is because it is actually searching inside uh my us house slash bin of which i do not have this uh my lib arithmetics file i do not have it there so i need to specify the parts where my compiler is going to search for anytime i try to load this library 
I have to specify the part, and that is where this guy comes in. Environment variable. The third thing we'll be talking about environment variable. That is where it comes in. You remember while you were working on your simple shell program, uh, you have environment variables. If you want to print your environment variable, you just use env. Uh, I want to print that out. That's what I'm doing. You use env. By the time you type env, it's going to print out your environment variables, right? I believe. Let me assume you can see my screen. Um, you can see. I typed env here, and it printed out my environment variables. It said that my shell is what bin slash bash. My pwd, my current working directory is what home slash vagrant. So environment variables are always of the format value uh, variable equals value. You can see that. This environment variable is an array of strings. The first string is this guy, shell equals bin slash bash. You can see there's no space there. You can't find any space in your environment variables. They are always together. So it will always have an equal to something equals to something. Something equals to something. This is the format, like always. Then log name equals to vagrant. This equals this. This equals this. What if we have a lot of things that is stored inside a particular variable? For instance, let me show you a variable that has a lot of things. There's this variable called parts. It is here. Parts, parts, parts. Where are you? Parts, parts, parts. Okay, yeah. This is parts. You can see parts. Parts equals to what? Slash home slash vagrant dot local bin. At this point, you can see something like a colon there. So what? This is the first part we have in my environment variable called part then it has a colon to split another part this is another part then another colon this is another part so if you check through all these parts eh, anytime you run as a, an executable file your compiler is going to come and check this part and it's going to run them that's if you have the executable file there so now what do you want to do our compiler is to i'm just using this to show us that this is our environment variable right so there is this environment variable that is not here it is called ld part the ld part is where your shared library parts are of which my compiler i actually don't have it let me let me copy this guy and um, if i want to print out parts this guy i will just say something like echo we use the echo command, then I'm going to pass in dollar, then I'm going to pass in the variable name. So when I say echo dollar part, dollar means value at. So I'm just saying echo value at part. So it's going to check through my part environment variable. What is there? Part equals to this. So it's going to print out the values I have inside parts. When I press enter, you can see slash home slash whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's going to print out the value at part. Which other variable do we have here? We have PWD, we have shell. So I can come up here and start printing out the value at PWD. I believe you can still see my screen. PWD. And I press enter. You can see that it will print out my current working directory using this environment variable. Then echo. You know, you can just keep echoing, echoing, echoing things. But you have to put in your dollar sign and you print it out. Now, this variable, I do not have it here. My LD library part. I do not have the variable here. I do not have it here. You see, when I do this, shift insert. Okay, let me show us how to temporarily create a variable. You can temporarily create a variable. Let me just say, I want to create a variable. You can use the export keyword temporarily. It can be used to temporarily create a variable. You can use export. Let me clear my screen. Increase the font. You say export then you specify the name of the variable you want to create so let's say i want to create a uh, len or let me name yeah let me name it len l e or no let me just use someone's name um let me just use someone's name okay let's use matilda's name um so let's say export quote 14 quote underscore 14 then I'm going to use equals to what? Matilda. 
Matilda. I don't know. Is this the correct spelling? Matilda. So when I use something like this, right? I'm using export keyword temporarily. It's going to be temporary though. It will still wipe when I close this terminal. Whatever I'm exporting here is going to be deleted. So I'm saying export keyword 14 equals to Matilda. So when I press enter, automatically it has created an environment variable called a uh, quad 14. How will I know that? We use our word echo keyword. Echo echo quad 14. So when I echo value at I use my dollar sign value at quad 14 and then it's printing Maltuda. Just like when I echo my PWD that is value at my print working directory. You can see okay let me change my this thing my night light night light is on so that you can see it clearly all right so this is just showing us that you can create an environment variable by yourself right and when i type env i'm surely going to see a uh, quote 14 and it has the value of matilda so let me decrease the font so we can see that then i just type that so i'm looking for quote 14 you can see it here right it says quote 14 is what matilda so on your own you can create environment variables but this one is only temporary they using the export keyword there's a way you can do it permanently i'll leave you to that to go and do your research about how you can you know <laughs> add things to your environment variable that it would be permanent but this one is actually temporary because if i were to do echo maltilda here it's not going to show me anything echo uh no quote 14 let me see why did i type it here echo quotes okay capital letters quotes underscore 14 and then you can see it's not bringing out anything no this is blank right because the instance of this shell is different from this one that is why it's not bringing out anything and if i exit this shell, like i said it's going to be deleted this uh, variable i just created is going to be deleted but there's a way to do it permanently there's a way to do it permanently so all this analogy where am i actually driving at where am i driving at we ran this file the other time and then i ran my store i already linked i already linked my test.c file with my lib arithmetic you remember right we did gcc then we passed in our minus l to show our current working directory is where we have the lib arithmetic shared folder then I pass in my minus O, right, to store the variable here. Then I said, you have to use, you have to pass in the name of the shared library with a minus L flag, then the name. You don't need to include lib and .so when you are doing this. You only do pass in the name. And I did this, I put inside store, then I was running store, and then it's still not running. It's saying that it can't find the words, it cannot open the shared library. And I, and I mentioned that we have to actually use this variable so that means i have to create an environment variable called ld library path it's actually not created it's not there when i do echo this guy and i press enter it's not going to print anything anything that is not existing just going to print out something blank like it's just going to be blank when i just say echo abc there's nothing like abc in my current uh, environment variable that's why it's not printing anything you can see right so that means we can actually create an environment variable and inside this lib path would we'll now specify the path that our compiler is going to look for so that it will see our um library by the time we are trying to run store it will not be telling us that uh, no such file or directory so what am i going to do just like we did we are going to use what export keyword right we are going to use export keyword so you say export then export what that means i want to create this variable i'm going to remove the dollar sign at the back i don't need the dollar sign export the name of the variable you want to create then you pass in your value right remember how we did it for Maltida and doing that of quote 14. so i'm going to say echo ld library path equals to what then i'm going to pass in my dot i'm going to pass in dot to it so i'm just going to do it like this dot what is dot once again dot is what your current working directory 
So by the time I do something like this and I press enter, so when I echo LD part, you can see it already has a value called what dot. So meaning that I'm telling my compiler when you are trying to run or look for the library, it's going to check this environment variable shared library path. So by the time it checks the path, it's going to see that the path is this current working directory. Then it is going to run my file. It's not going to say file not found. Like the error we are seeing here saying no such file or directory. Because it's actually checking inside another folder. Your slash bin, like I, we saw the other time, your slash bin slash uh, LD folder. That's where it's actually checking. But now it's going to check this dot. What is dot? Dot is your current working directory. So I'm going to re uh, compile now. I want to relink. I want to link test.file with my library where I have my functions, right? So that's what I'm trying to do now. And I'm pressing enter. So this guy has been updated. Then I'm going to say for slash store this time around. And here we have it. It's actually, you can see that, right? The functions are out. It's no longer saying uh, no such file directory. Why? Because we already included inside the shared library part. I included dots. And dots, like I said, refers to where you are currently. So it means that this guy, um, this guy, my shared library, whenever I'm trying to run this file, it's going to go and pick up my shared library and it's going to link it together. I don't know. Do we have any questions as regards to what we just did? Are we still here? No. No question. Okay. Yes, I'm still here. I think I have to practice this thing on my own because it's just it's making sense now, but most times by the time you open your own terminal, everything starts going in more. It starts doing any Arabic. Uh -huh. Okay. Basically That's right. just it's just working with commands and you need to understand each and every of the processes that you are going through as well you have to understand them you have to understand them um so i'm going to delete all what i have and i'm going to start again just so we understand it uh, very well very well um so i'm going to remove store i'm going to remove my lib good i only have the two files here again um let me clear this one so let me just remove this one and let me open this guy it's just so we are seen i just want us to understand this process very well so the first one we did was to create uh the library we created our library then we linked it to our what to our object code um so now let us create once again let us repeat the process we just did how do we create a library this is the library we want to create our uh, func.c file that is where we have the functions right so by the time we create a library we turn this func.c file we create a library out of it it's going to be an object code a machine code which we cannot read so how are we going to create a library so i want us to like respond now how am I going to create a library? Oh yeah, I'm expecting feedback. Oh. What did we see earlier? Am I still on the call? Uh, you're still on the call. Yes, you are. Okay, uh, the shared method. Okay. So what am I going to type? What is the name of a um, library that we're trying to create? Any name. You can pick any name. But this is the file we want to turn to a library, func.c file. We want to turn it to a library. So how do I go about that? Into a dynamic library. Okay, um, 
we can use the shared flag when compiling it. Uh, just tell me what to do, sure. so I just type. That's what I'm saying. Oh, oh, okay, GCC. Okay. Um, flag shared. Okay. Then the other flag, uh, FPIC. So what is this uh, that shared? What is it for? I think you should make you should have the um, dot o file. Convert it to dot o files before you now use the shared um, flag. That FPIC will just make you like produce the address kind of yes so it yes. should not be used at the same time this with the position shared position independent the code one. meaning that okay, we yes. are not interested in the position when you have the address of any variable you can run it anywhere so it's going to all the functions inside it's going to store the address of the functions you were saying something Me? Yes, you can go on. Okay, yeah, I, I was saying that you convert, you make it a dot o file. Convert the file you want to make it library to a dot o file before you now you know you are not linking it immediately. You just make it a dot o file before we now go ahead and then make it a library using the share flag. Okay, that's the second method. We should co convert it to an object code first, right? So, which flag are we using? Mm -hmm. You just convert it then, like. <laughs> we are using a flag to convert to the object code. This is the second method to go about it. If you want to convert it to an object code, you have to use your minus C flag. The FBI CVG. You use minus C, the name of the file, then FPIC. Minus C, the name of my file, which is my func.c, then I say position independent code, okay? Like, like this, right? So this yes. one is going to convert this guy to... Let me use this FPIC. Should I turn it this way? Funk.c, let's try. Let me see. Where is it? Okay, I didn't specify the output. So it already created the object code for this guy. You can yes. see that, right? The funk.o, if you do not specify the output, object code by default, they end with a dot .o extension. So this is it here. We already have the object code. The only thing remaining for the complete compilation of this guy is the what the linking stage yeah. of which we have not done. So this is an object code now, but this guy is not yet uh, a library, right? Yeah. Okay. So what's the next uh, thing to do? Lunar GCC. GCC shared use the shared flag shared now okay we are sharing yes the name of the file yes the name of the dot o file and then the this name of phone. the library that, that one that is going to end with dot so so you can do function punk dot so okay shared this guy then the output right funk. yes funk dot so No, it has to start with a leap, right? Yes. Then we can name it anything. So let me give it your name. Like this, right? So basically, what yes. you just did is that you split the commands into two. We The first thing you did was to generate our object code. So this one mm -hmm. and this one, we can actually combine it into two. That is what is here. We did the shared... 
then the FPIC, the file name that is our source code minus o mm. then lib and your debt xo extension but you LIB decided to mm -hmm. split it into two using uh but this minus c you see what i'm still uh you might at. not even you could not because use it if this you guy see by what default. the main thing is to use that fpic okay let's run this this is it then this is a shared library now this is the object code. Yes. You are turning the object code to a shared library and you are storing it inside yes. Miracle uh, lead my lead miracle.so uh, library. So we press enter and we'll do ls. This is our library now, our shared library. Then we can now go on to link this shared library with our uh test.c file, right? So yes, I didn't put the command to link here so to link to link your file you will say gcc then your c file what what's the name of our c file here that's our test.c file so we want to link our test.c file we want to link it using our minus l now the minus l will be followed by a dot to show that it's our current working directory right so our minus l dot then the name of your uh the name of your uh, what is the name again shared library so you say miracle then you have to put a minus small letter l in front like this you do not need to specify the extension and also the prefix that is the lib to show that it is a library then you can now specify the output into whatever um Whatever output that you so desire, Asha, you can just specify, you can say something like lab or something like that. So the same thing we are going to do here, GCC, our test.c, our minus L, capital L with the dot to show that yes, it is our current working directory. Your L, your minus L, like I said, is showing you that the path, so it's to specify the path of where the shared library is. So minus l then um minus l miracle then we are storing the output that's by the time it links our test just see with miracle we are storing the output inside uh what should we use let us say lab enter then it's compiled without no errors let's see then we have an executable record line. so by the time i run my lab as usual we are expecting it to fail right because it can't see our what this particular library we have to come and include our parts where we are currently right we have to include where we are currently inside the environment variable called ld library name so that is why we now use my export keyword right i say export now i even want to do something i even want to do something we already did this export earlier um okay exports don't worry let, let us do this first exports ld underscore library underscore parts i just say equals to what dot dot is what where i am currently right so by the time i do this and let me see let me run this guy again so I'm running my executable again now. So by the time I'm running my executable, it's not going to check inside this variable. By the time I decide to echo this variable, you are going to see that it already has this value. By the time you echo this variable, you can see. Um, okay, I'm having dot equals to dot inside the variable. Echo, no. Yeah, this should be what is there. Yeah, this is what is there. This should be dot. Dot is what my current working directory. Now I want to do I want us to do something. I'm going to delete what I have inside this variable. Yeah. I'm going to delete it. And I want to um do it in such a way that now I just did ls dot dot to show what I have inside my previous uh my parent working my parent directory 
that is the directory there is a parent to quote 14 which is what vagrant right so i want to do it in such a way that i want to put this file in fact let me just put nonsense inside this library let me just put da, 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 da. so let me echo it again oh no 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 i'm supposed to use export keyword now i just uh put something else inside i just put something else inside library part so let me echo what is inside now let me see the value that is inside can you see i have dot 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 dot, dot, dot. obviously if i should run my lab again it should fail because my compiler you can see says that what no such file or directory because i already changed what i have inside library parts by the time i'm running lab it's going to come and check library parts and it's saying something dot 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 i'm saying go and check inside dot 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 and doesn't even understand what dot 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 is or the particular parts then it's going to do what it's going to fail so this what i have here the jargons i have inside my library parts is almost the same thing as if uh i do not have the variable at all because before we do not have the variable we just created it right we just created it so now i want you to tell me if i have my lab file in my previous working directory no if i have my library if i have my library i want to move it now i want to move my lib miracle.so that is my library I want to move it to the previous working directory so like this so let me ls you can see it's here right i did ls dot dot it's going to list what i have in the pre my directory before this one that is the parent directory now this is it right export no i want to export just like we did earlier right ld library path and i'm putting dots enter then i'm now running my lab again it is failing so what can i do to make my lab work that's the question you can see i just did what i did earlier putting dots and yet it's still failing what do you think i can do to make lab work at this point let me list what i have here so you see i'm running lab which is dependent on this library called libmiracle.so i'm running it here and it is failing am i still on the call just yes so yeah if we really really understand what is going on under the hood then we should be able to understand uh the question i'm asking here now we created a library libmiracle.so we linked it using this particular flag right we saved it inside lab and now i'm running lab yet it is failing what is happening let me echo do we understand the question at all yes huh? yes 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 so can someone tell me why it is failing? Because both of them are not in the same um, directory. Yes, that's it. I don't want both of them to be in the same directory. So what can I do? That wherever this guy is, it's going to run it from there. Of course, we already know where it is now. I already know where it is. It's just in this previous directory now. This is it here. Mm. So what can I do? to make it run it from this particular directory that i mean i want to just do dot forward slash lab and i want you to print out the sum and the multiplication what can i do maybe when you are running the parts you do dot dot now so i to go to the previous directory and so what should i do how can i do that <laughs> When you export that this thing, leave library um, parts okay. equals to uh, dot dot. I feel. You what? I said I feel. Okay. <laughs> I sh I should just put dot dot here, ba. 
Wait, I'm using my phone. I'm gonna... Let me see. Yes, that's what I feel. So I just did that now. So if I should run lab now, it's going to work, right? I don't know. <laughs> Let's try. Voila. Yes. It's working. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Do we understand what happened there? Yes. Oh, yeah. I want others to talk. Do you understand what happened there? Yeah. We specify the parts whenever we are running our sh any library that depends on anytime you are running your shared library. It's going to come and check your LD library parts. Not only this guy, it still has some other places it's going to check. For instance, your USR, USR, no, your slash, USR, slash bin, slash LD, I feel. It says not a directory, slash lib, not a directory. There should be a directory there. USR slash lib. Good. This is it. These are all. Ah, we have a lot of files here. You are going to see some shared libraries here where your compiler is going to come and check. But because the guy is not there, that's why it is failing. Come and see. Let me see. If we have a shared library. A shared library. These guys are actually. Can you see? Lib. Anything started with lib dot what so can you see that right you can see it's a library right yes. lib dm whatever whatever so there are some files that before they will run on your program they actually need these libraries you can see them lib andu this is andu andu path cmd blah 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 so these files you definitely don't want to delete them you don't want to and if i should see the inside linux i'm very sure there might likely be a a, a library inside let me just see the inside linux maybe there might be and there might not be triggers you can just come here and come and check okay there's nothing there there's nothing there these are uh libraries 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 and so on and so forth um so let me see the back inside them um, vagrant cross 14 CD quote 14. Um, so I was saying it the other time. CD slash USR slash LD, right? Uh, where did I just leave now, sir? CD USR slash LIB okay slash lib okay slash usr slash lib let us try something maybe if we move this guy if we move libmiracle.so inside slash usr slash lib maybe it is going to work anywhere we call it in our shell we don't need to come and update our or or no let me let me come here um yes yes that is what i should do let me move it inside uh the particular distance so i should use a sudo command slash usr slash lib uh, i should move move what lib miracle inside usr slash lib like that and I press enter. So I believe libmiracle.so is already inside USL slash LB. So let me go back inside. Um, let me see. Is here? Okay, it has gone. So let me go back inside quote 14. Quote 14. And then let me run lab. And let us see. You can see it is working. Lab is working. Why? Because we already uh through it inside this usr slash lib and anytime your compiler mm. has checked this file like it can't find it 
that is when it's now come and check this one and if it cannot find the parts then to just print out the error message that uh file not found blah 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 so um that's one way i said you can do it permanently i said i wasn't going to talk about that but that's one way you can make a shared library but please don't enter inside this directory i only did it just for uh educational purposes because i wouldn't want you to use a command like rm inside this place trust me <laughs> a lot of things aren't going to work on your compiler again so you should be very careful you don't need to go inside that place so now i want to move this file back to so lib miracle so i want to move it back to my current working directory am i supposed to use dot uh it says permission denied so i should use my sudo and then bam i have it back here in my current working directory so when i do dot forward slash lab of course it's going to do what it's going to fail why because my library part i do not have the current working directory there right i do not have it there echo uh ld parts you can see i only have dot dot meaning that the previous working directory which is what vagrant and since this guy is not in vagrant lib miracle is not in vagrant and it is not inside my usr slash lib so it will just say it can't find it so if i want it to find it where i am currently i have to do what export and add uh so or i can okay yeah i can also append to this guy you can use export and then um, um ld equals to yeah when you say equals to you can say value at ld miracle what what i'm trying to type here is that let me increase this so you see it very well i'm saying export ld i want to set a value for it you can see it has a value before the value at ld library part is what dot dot so i want to add another thing to it and you know about our environment variables when you have two or more things right um let me just echo parts for you you see what they use to separate them you see parts this is the first part home vagrant local bin this is the first part then it's separated by what a colon then this is the next part another colon the next part so when i want to add something to this guy i will just need to come and put a what a colon right very good so um i'm going to run this command again echo no export uh then ld library equals to what if i were to just put let's say colon then dots it will not make sense because it means i'm adding colon and dot so i should actually say value at so value at ld library that is the value that is stored in ld library itself let me itself then now append to it dot what is the value at ld part before it is what dot dot then i want to append to it i'm putting my colon then i want to append to it dot so when you do something like this you press enter so by the time you echo ld part it's going to give you um where are we having dot 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 okay yeah we're having dot dot which was the first dot dot right we have a colon they will now have dot again so that means there are two parts inside this thing now two the first one is what dot dot how will you know there are two if you see a semicolon there semicolon is going to split right just like we have here this is the first one no this is the first one sorry this is the first one followed by the semicolon semicolon is splitting this one from this one right so this is the third fourth and so on and so forth so right this is the first one then this is the second one so by the time i now run my dot forward slash lib miracle.so now wow it says no 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 i'm to run dot lab not lib miracle sorry i'm running dot lab and then it's going to work now why because i already have the my current working directory there and if i were to move this guy to my previous working directory it's still going to work too because i have the previous working directories 
part there is still going to work that's uh, let me just do that move lib miracle dot dot right and when i run my lab it's still going to work meaning that either it is here or my previous working directory it is still going to work i hope that is uh clear do we understand yes okay uh do we have any question as we got what we've discussed so far Do you have any question? No. No. But it's as if this is a no. lot to take in, Ari. Yes, so yes, so right. Honestly, yes. It's a lot, ba. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Don't worry. By the time you go back to your project on the intranet, I feel this would make more sense like you because for this particular project there is no resource to read so you have to go and find resources by yourself and that's why i started with the stages of compilation just so you understand these stuff then why and how we need standard libraries then and inside this our code now i can write another code right um we only have test.c i can write another code and then i call um some and more inside the new another test.c for me another file then by the time i link it with my uh my okay i already deleted that okay i already moved it to the previous working directory um i already moved it lib miracle.s so let me move it to my current working directory so by the time i link it with this guy again that means i can use it that's the uh benefit of having dynamic libraries so you can use it multiple times depending on how many times you need it just like you go to a library to go and read a book and then you will return the book so i'm going to skip this guy i understand this a lot but then uh this session is recorded by the time you watch this session over and over and you master this command maybe you are not familiar with these commands by the time you master them you don't even need to cram them it's something you can always google how can you, you know, create a dynamic library? How to use your shared and your fpic and all that? Then you are going to uh, get the hang of it. Then how to also set your path environment variable. And if you know you don't want to set this, just move it inside your usr slash uh, slash ld or is it slash bin slash ld or something like that. You move it inside that particular folder. But I would not recommend that to do so that you will not go and do what you are not supposed to do so we'll be skipping these guys because our time is fast spent you can go and read up on what these commands what they do nml dd and id config so briefly i'll just be showing us c python like just uh a small concept there i think that one too is also uh discussed right there on the intranet So one beautiful thing about you having a shared library is that you can write a code in C and you will call that function. Like this our sum and more. We can call it inside Python. Thankfully, you guys have started Python now. That's one beautiful thing about shared libraries. Provided you have this, your lib, my miracle.so. You can call it and it is going inside your Python file, I mean, and it is going to do what? It's going to actually uh make use of these functions i think this is one reason why alx i uh, want us to uh python dot py i don't know let me name it something more reasonable let me say test dot py so we have the first test dot c file then we have the next test dot py file right so let us just write a python code that would uh call this function that we have inside our func.c file of course which we already know is inside our lib my 
miracle.so we understand that this library is also the same as the funk.c file right so i'm just going to show us how to do that right so i believe we already we still remember how to write python codes right so one thing you want to include in your python code is import you want to import like i'm using the word include because that's what we normally would say in c when python is no longer include it's import so there's something we call that you can import they call it the c types so you want to import the c type these c types will allow you to use some other functions that you can use to you know uh import c inside python it has already been declared or it has been defined here how you can use your python uh, your c codes inside your python files so let us start by declaring a variable now basically we'll be writing what our c function here is doing we declare a variable a declare a variable b then we're also go going to print out this so a equals to 200 right b equals to 5 then c okay we can just call c right we can just say c equals to now we cannot just say sum of a and b just like we did here in our c program we can't just write something like that there is something that will help us to do that because we want to call a function now and where is the function it's already in our shared library so your python file can be linked you can link your python file to your library that you already created that is the library that has all your functions and there is this thing we will use that's already defined inside c types so it is cdll uh, c types dot inside the c types we have something defined there that is cdll let me just show you that um python 3 then import c types right i'm inside my interpreter now so i want to do dir uh, C type DIR is used to check the particular, uh, should I say, CTYPS. Good. DIR is used to check whatever is defined inside this particular module that you just imported. See, I imported the module here. Then I use DIR. We already discussed this DIR in one of our PODs on. Um, uh, import and modules yeah, yeah yeah i think we discussed it then so inside c types we have this cdll it should be somewhere mm -hmm. here cdll cdll where is it c c c c c d l l should be somewhere here sha i can't find it now you can see um it allows you to work with pi uh, c codes <laughs> i don't know why i can't find it but then it should be here it's, i can see it's, it's um it's on the, the third line to the last line, line. um yeah memo above memo okay. um resize memo pdl yeah come up line what line. at the top of it okay 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 yeah yeah i've seen it the first this line is. yes so is that cdl we are going to use it can help us to run our shared library it can help us run it and even access uh, whatever we have inside so when you want to use whatever a module defines so use your dot operator i believe you already understand that right so use our dot operator c d l l then you pass in it's a function right so you pass in your opening and curly braces so inside this function now you are now going to run your library so what's the name of our library our library is what libmiracle.so that's the name of our library so i'm going to pass in the name of my library that is i want to run the library dot forward slash it's in our current working directory that's the meaning libmiracle.so so you are going to specify that i want to wrap it as a string so it is going to check our current working directory dot forward slash then it's going to run libmiracle.so then it's going to load this shared library 
all the functions stored therein is going to load it and it's going to pass it to this guy called c so basically c now is standing as our a c this this variable called c now is standing as if it is your uh library now like this variable called c is your library so from c just like when you have a module if you want to access the function in a module you can just say something like c dot now c dot what what do we have inside our func file we have some so you can say something like c dot sum you'll be able to access it how you use your cdll function to open your shared library then whatever it is returning it is storing it here so this c dot sum now is as if you are actually accessing what you have inside your shared library this lib miracle .so. remember that the lib miracle .so is what it's an object file right your library so your cdll is going to convert this file and it's going to be interpreted uh whoever wrote this c type dot cdll function i wouldn't know but then it's going to import your c code that is going to be you are going to be able to use the functions you wrote in c you are importing it now into your python script and you are storing it here as a module so your c dot sum now you are accessing some which is already stored inside c so that's basically it so i want us to produce the same output as our c file here so i'm going to do what print out um i want to print out um is this guy printing anything this function called sum this function called sum no it's not printing out anything it's just returning something okay so let us print um let us use f string in python oh print f string then i want to say a just like we have it here right plus then b equals to then this third line now will now call my function right so i'll say c dot what's the name of the function called sum right c dot sum then i'll open it then i'll pass in a and b as the argument i'm going to close that up then i'm going to close my print statement uh okay i didn't terminate that good so this now is going to print f string a plus b that is 200 plus 5 equals to what c dot sum a b so i'm using this c now the variable called c of which has loaded my library am i still on the call yes you are okay c <laughs> has loaded my library library using this function called cdll which is already defined in c types so it has already loaded that so i have access to everything that is actually being defined inside my shared library so that's why i'm able to access some from inside the library so the same thing i'm going to do for more i'm going to say c okay print i'm using f string then a plus b no i'm not i shouldn't use plus now a times b right that's the output we have here print f a times b is equal to c so the same thing a times b equals to then i'm saying c dot sum no i'm not accessing sum now i'm accessing um mol mol is the function here yeah? so c dot more then a comma b and i'll terminate that okay so i feel we are good to go now print f string a times b is equal to c dot mol a b so if everything goes well let us see if this code is going to run so we wrote our function in c we stored it inside the shared library then we are passing the dynamic library to c type dot cdll which is going to give us access to this shared library then from the library we can call our sum and mole function so let us see um 
so um, let me run my test file test.c file so that's our oh lab I saved it inside lab sorry so this is for our C program right the shared library of our C program now the shared library that we connected with our test our Python program that's what I'm going to run now so Python 3 test.py file and then I press enter this is a Python file and you can see it's giving us this very same output 200 plus 5 is equal to 205 then 200 times 5 is equal to 1000 so this is one way you can write a function in C and you can use the function you wrote in C you can use it in your Python script or your Python file uh, this is one very useful importance of we having a shared library a dynamically uh, a dynamic library you can dynamically link our library that we wrote or our functions you understand i said the library is just like a collection of codes or functions that can be used multiple times we use the same library for our python file and we use the same library for our c file so this is one very uh useful importance of our shared library in c programming so this is where we are going to uh, end the session tonight i don't know if we have any questions as regards uh what we just wrote inside our python script about how we called a c function right there inside our python script all these stops are actually on the internet as well it's there you have it there it's one of the i think advanced tags or something like that and let me put it to you there is a particular task you are still going to do like now you are going to start working with c python actually and there's a particular project by the time you get to month eight of this program that will necessitate you to um although it's optional Sha, it's optional like your portfolio projects you'll be asked to create a game and you're going to code this game entirely in c but you are going to create a shared library you are going to write your functions in c then you know to create games you use python programming so you are going to call those functions you created with C. You are going to link them to your Python file, which you are going to use to run your game and all those stuff. And I feel it is going to be like interesting by the time you get to that stage. I think month eight of this program, you are going to start working. So right now you should start working with C Python, start creating functions in C, start importing them inside your um your python script or your python file it's going to be interesting actually so let me stop recording <clears throat>